here's a quick uh, recap of what I've uh, done this last week on our VW uh, EV West conversion. And so uh, this last week I actually got a lot, quite a bit done. I was able to get, as uh, you can see, the engines all out and the transaxles all out, CV shafts are all out. Um, plus, right now I'm starting the cleanup phase of the uh, engine bay and the rest of the components. Um, I did find on uh, J Bugs a real nice aluminum plate that'll cover all of this and right down in here and on this opposite side over here. It's like a three piece aluminum kit that'll finish the, uh, the back end of this uh, engine bay. Plus it'll give me a place where to mount the, um, the charging unit that will go right here, which is the charging unit for all the batteries on the, uh, for the, two, the twin battery packs. But overall I'm really pleased with uh, the way everything's going. We've got a great uh, VW here with practically zero corrosion or rust. And so uh, let me walk up to the front of the, uh, of the, the VW and show you what, uh, what the front end looks like now compared to last week. Um, so I've gotten everything out of here that I need to get out and I cleaned it up quite a bit and kind of reorganized some of the, the wires and the tubes and so forth and something interesting I found out about these VWs was that the washer bottle here um, there is no washer bottle motor it is actually what you do is you fill it up with uh, air uh, I don't know what 35 45 pounds there's actually a Schrader valve right there that pressurizes this bottle um, and then, and then uh, uh, what you do, I guess, to maintain the pressurization in the bottle once you use the, once you use the uh, windshield washer things, is that there's this line here. I couldn't figure out where it went to. And I looked at the end of it, and it's the same size as the uh, spare tire uh, Schrader valve or the, the tire valve. And so basically, you would just screw that into the top of the, the spare tire. And I guess that's what supplies the uh, backup air for it. But so a couple of little things I got to do. I noticed uh, that uh, there's some shadow in here. I'll see if I can't zoom in. That the reservoir cap was all cracked and been repaired with who knows what kind of glue. And then I looked a little closer and the actual reservoir itself uh, let's see here. It has a crack in it right there. So I'm going to have to change that. So it looks like the next couple of weeks before I go up to Oregon, I'll do a lot of the mechanical uh, uh, repairs and so forth like that. And then probably do the electrical stuff once I get back. But let me walk over to what I've shown you all what I've taken off of the car so far. And so these are all the components right here that are not going back on. These are the, that's the rear seat assembly and that will be going back. But all these other components will be uh, coming off. So you can see there we've got the the hang on under under the dash uh, air conditioning unit, uh, the evaporator, condenser, a blower fan type of thing, and all the other components plus the fuel tank. So I think I'm going to I'm going to weigh it all out and see what uh, see what all uh, uh, what all of it weighs and how much uh, weight weight I'm saving and then compensating for with the batteries, but. Back over in this area here, you can see I got the CV shafts off, and what we're going to do with these is um, probably just straight ass replace them. Um, it's not worth the time and the effort to rebuild them. Uh, just the boots, where the CV shafts are anywhere from 60 to 100 bucks each, uh, it could take me a couple hours each one to do, and so it just isn't cost effective. So the transaxle I pulled out was in, in actually really good shape, other than some leaks. So what we're going to do is you can see actually some oil at the bottom of the, uh, the bell housing here um, which is probably coming out from the seal up in here so we're going to change that seal plus we're going to change the throw out bearing this thing right here and um, and so forth like that there was some seepage coming out of right in this area here so I'm going to change that seal that gasket uh, that gasket that gasket uh, shift seal um, probably on the other side I'm going to change the same thing the seal in there and the gasket down there and I'll need to take this off this I'll need to take the starter off and then EV West actually sells a plate that will go that will cover this hole because when I take the starter off I don't want an exposed hole you can see where the starter comes through uh, to engage with the flywheel so 
I'm going to need to reuse the the clutch uh, pressure plate, the disc, and the flywheel, which they all look to be in pretty good shape. So I'll need to take those off also, and those will go on to the um, this unit back here. I've kind of laid out all of the uh, components that we have so far, but. <clears throat> I, I have to say I'm really impressed with the quality of the EV West products, um, so thumbs up to them. So far everything has been, I mean, really top notch. And so uh, uh, it's expensive, but it seems to be worth it. As you can see here, I've got the motor pretty much in position so that I can put on the, uh, the, the, the uh, adapter, which is this right here. And on our next video, I'll probably show how it all fits on there. but. It's going to take a little bit of effort to lay everything out so that it'll fit properly in the engine bay. And then, because uh, uh, there's a couple other components that I don't have here that I'm going to have to uh, order. Uh, mostly the uh, switch and contactor, kind of a, it's a box, uh, waterproof box that I'll have to go back in there to house all that stuff. But, uh, so this is the unit that we chose to do our cooling with. As you can see, it's a kind of all-in-one. Uh, unit so basically with this chiller plate right here there's an in and an out port and there'll be a water pump in between pumping the fluid from here to the chiller plate and back and around and uh, shouldn't be too tough to wire the the uh, EV West uh, wiring diagram which is in the PDF form on their web page is really nice which we're and we're gonna blow that up and have it laminated so uh, Anyway, so moving along uh, quite well right now, and uh, now the the dirty part of the the work of the uh, job, I get to uh, clean everything up and prepare everything to put to to reinstall the EV West stuff. And as a quick little bonus, I'm going to walk around this beautiful car right here, and those of you that are car buffs will recognize it as a uh, a Dodge Hellcat. And this beauty is an absolute blast to drive beautiful lines on it and um, 707 horsepower is just a uh, it's just a haul ass kick ass good old American car and uh, I'll walk around it a little bit more here just to give a some more a look at it in the lines we don't have that good a light in here today uh, but uh, yeah it's a beauty let me just do a little bit more walk around like this and I think this is called mango orange or something like that. Some sort of color like that, but anyway. There you have it, fading out. So everybody have a good week. Stay cool, stay healthy, talk soon.